A middle of the night home invasion. Forced from bed into a car by black clad strangers. For most of us, this is a violent nightmare scenario. For 15 year old Elizabeth Gilpin, it was an actual experience arranged and paid for by her own parents. In her gripping memoir Stolen, Grand Central, 336 pp, half out of four, Gilpin vividly describes the years she spent in a brutal behavior modification program meant to rehabilitate her as one of many so-called troubled teens. Now an actor and producer, Gilpin revisits her terror and trauma in order to shine a light on the extraordinary and dehumanizing practices of the therapeutic boarding school industry. Gripping and detailed, Stolen will linger long for readers as both a survival story and powerful testament. Growing up in small town South Carolina, the soccer standout began to struggle with serious depression and self-harm. She fought often with her parents and siblings, drank and took pills, and skated past severe injury in a dangerous driving accident. The last straw was an eighth of weed Elizabeth bought but didn't smoke, still, it was enough to start the process of admitting her, without her knowledge or consent, to a program that began with a strip search, drug test and wilderness trip. The final girl support group a savvy summer slasher from horror hound Grady Hendrix. After three months of forced camping in Appalachian Woods with 12 other girls, Gilpin is deemed ready for the Carl Brooks School in Virginia, whose property was previously a tobacco plantation worked by enslaved people. Gilpin enters a dark world with arcane rules governing everything from her clothing to when she can speak to the workshops that Carl Brook administers. These sessions are part interrogation, part psychological torture. Patients are taunted into making disclosures of their worst impulses and actions, and abuses, from the past. Then they are group shamed, made to wear signs that say slut or junkie, for example, before being healed and deemed ready for the next level of workshop. Friends are expected to inform on each other, attempts to rebel or escape are severely punished. Teenagers like Elizabeth wait desperately until they turn 18, at which point the school can no longer forcibly contain them. Don't worry, a friend whispers to her. This place isn't forever. But as Gilpin's memoir proves, Carl Brooks scars can linger for what seems like forever. The damage from such prolonged cruelty causes significant problems for her later in life, as it does for many of her friends, who suffer overdoses, accidents and suicide. A standout chapter in Stolen delves into the history of the therapeutic boarding school industry, tracing its growth from a cult named Sinanon to an enterprising business owner named Mel Wasserman, who had no medical or educational qualifications. At times a reader wishes for more clarity in the later chapters of Elizabeth's life, especially in terms of how she came to terms with her family, whom she thanks in the book's acknowledgments. Yet Stolen succeeds with its graphic portrayal of Carl Brooks' methods, raising important questions about consent, age, and agency. As Elizabeth Gilpin puts it, reflecting on her teenage years, I didn't need love. I just needed a little extra help. The Hate You Give author Angie Thomas says this ya novel is why she writes books for people like me.